This video was brought to you by Squarespace. Today I want to share with you 13 incredibly common decluttering mistakes. And I'll admit a lot of these come from my own personal experience and past pitfalls. It's important you know these before you declutter so you don't waste a bunch of your time. And Lord knows time is the most precious commodity. And if we spend a bunch of time spinning our wheels in the decluttering process, it's just going to slow us down and take away from the parts of life we really care about. So hopefully this video will help you be more successful and efficient at decluttering. Before we get into the video, I just want to encourage you, if you enjoy content on minimalism, on building an empowering mindset, building confidence, if you enjoy content on simple living and finding meaning and creating space in your life for what you care about, please hit the subscribe button below. Doing that really supports me and the channel in more ways than you might realize. So if you're willing to just hit that button to help me, as well as to gain access to a bunch of videos on these topics, I would really, really appreciate it. It's a fairly simple act for you, but it makes a really big impact on my life. Anyway, enough of that. The first common decluttering mistake is not decluttering enough. And I know this one feels very obvious and straightforward, but I don't think I often stopped to think about that when I first started decluttering. Back in the day when I first started hearing about Marie Kondo and it was all the rage to declutter, I started doing some declutters and I thought, wow, this is so great. I'm getting rid of stuff. But it was so little. It was very little. And it would just be a few months later when I would still be overwhelmed with my stuff yet again. And I'll admit, I'm probably not fully past that phase of not decluttering enough. Like, I still realize as I do continue declutters that I still could be getting rid of more. So don't take this as me being on a high horse. But I do think that instead of just decluttering one out of every 10 items, decluttering half your stuff or even sometimes more than half can make such a big impact on your space, your stress level and your life. It feels sometimes like a little bit of a risk like, oh, will I have to buy this thing again? Will I regret it later? And there is risk involved. But the question is, is that risk worth the payoff of finding more meaning and more time and space in your life? Is simplifying your life something you actually want? Because if it is, getting rid of more might help you get there. A second common mistake in decluttering is not communicating with the people around you. Whether it's someone who shares your home and you haven't communicated with them about what you're allowed to declutter and what you're not, or whether it's someone further away from you in your life, but who serves as a support system. Communicating with people around you about your goals and decluttering about your pursuit of minimalism can help motivate you and keep you on track. If you start decluttering other people's belongings, it can lead to a lot of conflict and discord and ultimately get in the way of being successful in the long run. You have to figure out those boundaries with the people you live with and what is okay for you to declutter and what is not okay. Also think if there are people in your life who tend to give you a lot of gifts, taking the time to really explain why you're pursuing minimalism or how you're in this decluttering process can be incredibly impactful. Sometimes there are those people that will just give you gifts no matter what, and that's okay. You can't control everything that other people do, of course, but I do think that continued communication in an ongoing way can ultimately lead people to give you just a bit less. I think it's helpful to express your excitement what you're hopeful for, why you're starting to declutter and make these changes. Expressing how much effort and work you're putting into the decluttering process can make a big impact. Even the people around you who are skeptical or tend to give you things might start to buy in if you show that you're passionate and why you care. And ultimately, I think just talking about minimalism and decluttering more helps you stay on track. Even if it's not someone that's giving you too much, just talking about the concepts with somebody gets you excited about it. I mean, that's part of why I built this channel. It's a space for me to think about these concepts, share it with others, interact with other people who are also in this decluttering journey. And it helps me keep on track. It keeps me motivated. So use your community. Use communication to your benefit. It can be a huge motivator. A third pitfall or mistake is not decluttering categorically, at least at some point in the decluttering process. This is a trick I got from Marie Kondo, but I think it's so helpful 
to take all the things in any one category and bring them all together. I think this is especially true for bathroom stuff and kitchen stuff, because sometimes you'll have stuff stored in various spots in your home, whether it's in multiple bathrooms or in a pantry and the kitchen, and you don't realize how many duplicates of items you have or how much you have, because if you're just decluttering stuff in different spaces, you just don't recognize how much excess there is in your home. So I think bringing everything in a big category in one place and reckoning with how much you have in any given category can help you get rid of more. A fourth decluttering mistake is not finding a strategic approach that works for you. What I mean by this is that sometimes people can follow instructions from a manual or book but have challenges along the way that just doesn't fit into that approach. And I think figuring out how to think about decluttering and what strategies to use that actually work for you in the context of your life can make it much more doable to be successful. I'll give you an example. For me, it was realizing that I didn't just have to declutter everything right away at once. For me, it was realizing that I could take stuff and put it away in storage for a while before I fully decluttered it. Doing that allowed me to separate myself from a higher percentage of my stuff because I didn't think of it as I'm never going to see this again. I could go back and get it if I really wanted to. That allowed me to part with more of my stuff. I put it away in storage and then I would get rid of it, but realize that I didn't really need it and I didn't really miss it. So figure out which strategies or approaches work for you and capitalize on those. Don't feel like you have to stick to one particular game plan just because some expert told you it's what's right. Find what works for you. It took me a long time to learn that lesson and I'm so glad I did learn it eventually. Now I wanna take a quick break to talk about the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Squarespace is this all-in-one platform that allows you to create websites and use analytics and all these different tools to create an online presence for you or your business. It has beautiful aesthetics, it's incredibly easy to use, and it offers a lot of different ways to personalize your space and make it really your own. They've got a lot of different capabilities as well, like blogging and commenting features, scheduling where clients can quickly view your availability and book their appointments or classes, all kinds of things that make a website more functional for you and your particular needs. I've used Squarespace for my photography and videography business, and we also used it as our wedding website, and we absolutely loved our experience from beginning to end. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash slice of light for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Back to the topic of this video, the fifth common decluttering mistake is not addressing the underlying cause of the clutter. Continuing to go on purchasing frenzies or collecting things things on a regular basis can lead us to reaccumulate the things that we got rid of in the first place. I have an entire video on this topic. If you want to learn more, I'll link it above and in the description box below. But having a lot of stuff and then getting rid of it and then reaccumulating it is kind of just a waste of your time. If you're going to go through the effort of decluttering, figure out what's causing the clutter in your life in the first place. Often there's an emotional reason for it. Often it's filling some kind of emotional hole or social need. And I think taking the time to analyze yourself and figuring out why you're shopping in the first place can help you keep yourself from reaccumulating that stuff. Another common mistake is keeping to scripts that you were taught to follow, subscribing to belief systems that are really outdated and don't necessarily reflect your values. I think about the whole concept of memorabilia, the fact that there is a word for that in the English language, the whole idea that a particular object is this vessel through which you can revisit the past. I get it on some level, sometimes seeing stuff reminds you of events. I'm not saying you can't have any memorabilia, but I think this whole societal construct has ultimately contributed to some toxic ways of living, of keeping so much stuff that it really pulls you back from what you care about in life. That human capacity and need for nostalgia can really keep us from enjoying and living in the current moment. I'm not saying that nostalgia is all bad, but I think when we connect our stuff to our nostalgia and feel like we need to keep something just to keep a memory alive, we can end up missing out on a lot of great opportunities in the future. Lately, I've been going through some of my childhood school projects because my parents moved and they gave me a bunch of my stuff from my past. And I've really struggled to part with some of my school projects because I do remember a time way back in the day where I think my mom showed me one of her 
childhood school projects. And I absolutely loved seeing it. And I thought it was really cool that she had kept that from the past. It was just this little glimmer into her past. But then when I also think about it right now, and I try to remember what was the thing she even showed me, I'm having trouble remembering. And also the difference being she just kept like one or two projects from her past, whereas I had like a bunch. I think sometimes when we have a good experience with one object that reignites a memory, it leads us to think that we should keep everything. Otherwise, we'll forget all of our memories. The problem is that when we have so many of these memories sitting in our basements, how often do we actually go around to revisiting these memories? Instead, it's just a bunch of stuff leading to stress. So while I'm not saying throw everything out, I just think that we don't need to feel like we need to follow a certain script all the time to keep things for the sake of memory. We can keep one or two things, but it doesn't mean we need to keep everything. Another common decluttering mistake is letting guilt serve as an absolute moral compass in your decluttering. Just because you feel guilt about decluttering something doesn't mean it's wrong. Sometimes guilt is a really healthy emotion. It helps us learn lessons and be better in the future. But also sometimes it can run haywire. And because of those societal scripts I just talked about, we can start to feel guilty about things that we don't necessarily need to be feeling guilty about. Sometimes guilt can be helpful, but other times it's destructive. And I would argue that in decluttering, quite often the guilt is more unhelpful than helpful. So let this just be a way to give yourself permission. If you're feeling guilty decluttering something, you can declutter it. I had this comment recently where one of you mentioned that you were struggling with decluttering this wonderful heirloom family photo of, I think it was your parent, maybe your dad. But at the beginning of the comment, the person said that they didn't want to have to bring this item with them. They didn't know if they could discard it. But they said it right there. They didn't want to have to bring the object with them. But I think it was a lot about guilt that kept them from decluttering it. And so often we keep things for other people than ourselves, or we feel guilty about being wasteful, or we feel like we're letting go of a memory if we get rid of something. But ultimately, I think sometimes deep down, we know that we don't want to have this object anymore. And I think it's important to stay connected to that inner self, that part of you that wants to pursue minimalism, that is doing this for a reason, perhaps to find more meaning or purpose in your life, or just to reduce your overall stress. Connect with that part of yourself that knows that an object does not equal a person. Realize that guilt is a common pitfall and that just because you feel guilt doesn't mean that it's wrong. I think an eighth common mistake that's really related to the past but just is a little more specific is letting self-blame keep you from going through your stuff. I think sometimes when I go through my clutter, I start to blame myself a lot. I start to think about how did I get to this point where I have so much stuff? What is wrong with me? How did I let it get this bad? And I really think that that type of thinking can be detrimental to the process and ultimately just keep us from getting to it. So if you start to declutter and you notice you're starting to blame yourself or you're starting to judge yourself in this negative way for getting to this point, remember that a lot of us feel that way when we clutter and we are living in a society that has encouraged us to collect and it's not necessarily our faults but we have the power to do something about our stuff and to make a change in the future another common mistake is not following through with the logistics of actually getting rid of the stuff it happens to the best of us but sometimes we do the declutter and then we forget to actually get rid of the stuff it just sits in a bin or in a pile and we keep it and we don't get rid of it if this is you just make sure you have some kind of plan for how you're eventually going to get rid of it. Even if it doesn't happen right away or it's part of your process, make sure that you have a doable way to get rid of the stuff in a way that feels good to you, in a way that's feasible to you, because otherwise you'll never get around to it. How are you going to get rid of those large pieces? Do you need help transporting things? Consider the barriers and problem solve them. A tenth decluttering mistake is giving up when you get off track. Life can get really busy. Believe me, I get it. But sometimes we can give up 
on that process of getting rid of this stuff or continuing to do declutters because we just have too much going on and that's okay. We don't have to be consistent all the time. It is a process. It's about finding ways to fit it into your schedule. But just because you get off track or you have some big shopping haul, it doesn't mean you need to give up. This is a process. We are human and it doesn't need to be from zero to 100, a perfect minimalist. Like I was actually recently moving around some stuff in my house, my family was helping me. And I was just thinking to myself, wow, I have a YouTube channel on minimalism and decluttering and I still have all this stuff. I feel like such a fraud, but I realized that I am just somebody, I'm just a human on this process of decluttering and I don't need to be perfect about it. And that doesn't mean that I'm a total fraud. I'm still working at this. I'm still thinking about this. I'm still doing doing regular declutters and that is what is real. We don't need to be perfectionists about this process, especially when we live in a society that over prioritizes belongings. It's kind of this process of de-brainwashing ourselves from what society tells us is important. It's easy to reaccumulate. Sometimes it's hard to get around to the declutters when we're busy and that's okay. It's just about finding the time and getting back on track once you've fallen off the horse. An 11th common decluttering mistake is having a what if mindset, failing to live with the doubt. And what I mean by that is quite often when I'm decluttering stuff, I'll find an object and think, what if I do need this in the future? What if it could be used for this other thing? What if it could even be used for a cool art project? There's so many reasons to keep an object and there are so many what ifs. But if we let those what ifs control our lives and determine our futures, we're gonna be living in constant fear and living ultimately with a lot more stuff. So recognize when you're what ifing. I was trained in treating OCD and quite often for OCD, those what if thoughts are the things that keep the compulsions going. So in the case of the presentation of OCD where somebody is washing their hands excessively to the point where their hands bleeding or they just spend so much of their day washing their hands, quite often it's because they're what ifing. They're thinking, what if I get really, really sick? Or what if I make someone else sick because I don't wash my hands enough? What if thoughts can be really damaging and control our behaviors? These what if thoughts can really run away with themselves and it's not our fault. It's often our brains just jumping into conclusions and creating these scenarios that might not actually happen. So I think it's helpful to learn to live with doubt, to live with the risk and the unknown, especially if it's for the sake of living more according to your values. And in the case of decluttering, learning to live with that doubt that maybe I will regret a declutter, maybe I'll wish I had something, but ultimately it'll be worth it in the long run. A 12th common mistake is failing to reward or reinforce yourself when you've made a lot of progress. Use your own momentum to catapult yourself forward. And when I say reward, it doesn't have to be buying yourself something new. It can just be sitting down and kind of metaphorically patting yourself on the back and reminiscing about the progress you've already made. Thinking about the before and after photo, considering what changes you've made and what a big impact it's had on your life can really keep you moving forward in the decluttering process. So often it's easy to focus on what we haven't done, especially if we have a lot of stuff to declutter. If we declutter one closet, we can think about, oh, well, I still have a whole house or a whole apartment to clear out. But if we take the time to think about that one closet, to look at it, to enjoy it, to feel good about that, I think it's more likely we're going to be doing more declutters in the future. A 13th common mistake is thinking that minimalism means extreme minimalism. Ultimately, you need to find the balance that works for you in the context of your life, and you don't need to go super extreme to see some benefits. Sometimes I would argue anything to an extreme can be detrimental. If you get too intense and focused on getting rid of stuff, sometimes I'll miss out on some of the benefits of just paying attention to other parts of your life. Sometimes minimalism can just be getting rid of enough so that you don't have to spend so much time just focused on your stuff. Anyway, that's pretty much all I have for you today. If you have other ideas for decluttering mistakes, feel free to share them in the comments below. And again, please hit the like button if you ended up enjoying the video. Hit subscribe if you want more videos like this. Doing those things does support me, so I'd appreciate it. Don't forget to check out Squarespace if you're interested. And I have an Instagram and Patreon linked in the description box below. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.